Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 39, part B. We're discussing the bivariate normal distribution. In the last video, we derived the marginal distribution of Y from the um, joint PDF uh, of X and Y. And we found out that the marginal distribution of Y has a normal distribution with mu Y sigma Y squared. And I didn't derive it, but I stated that you could derive it similarly, and you would end up with a normal distribution mu of x, sigma squared x, for the marginal of x. So in this video, we are going to um, derive a conditional distribution of y given x. So let's take a look at the conditional distribution of y given x Spoiler here, you can see that it's a normal distribution. Um, so the conditional distribution of y given some fixed value of x, so this is going to be a constant. x is a constant here because it's given, and y is our random variable. So when we fix a value of x, let's say at 5, then we have a random variable that is normally distributed uh, for y. And the same is true at uh, any other value of x, let's say at 10 or at 15. Remember that these values of x do not have to be whole numbers. They can be any number because x is continuous as is y. So there's an infinite number of conditional distributions uh, for y given the infinite number of values of x. Now, let's, um, let's do this derivation. And recall that, as I said, the... the the distribution, the marginal distribution of x, f of x of x, is um, normal mu, uh, the mean of mu x and the variance sigma squared x. I'll get it out in a minute. So to, to derive this distribution of y given x, we go back to the definition of the, dist, uh, of the conditional distribution. So the joint PDF over the marginal um, of x, all right? And there is no shortcut here for this method. What we have to do is we have to plug in the PDF of the joint distribution and the PDF of the uh, marginal distribution. So I will zoom in so we can see that we have plugged that in. <clears throat> and remember that when you're dealing with a fraction over a fraction, that if something up here is in the denominator and something down here is in the denominator, you can cancel those. Or if that's not comfortable for you, you could invert and multiply. Also, so we have 2 pi divided by square root of 2 pi. I would hope that you immediately know that that is the square root of 2 pi, but in case you don't, let's walk through the, uh, the derivation here or the um, explanation. So I've got 2 pi over square root of 2 pi. This is equal to the square root of 2 pi times the square root of 2 pi over the square root of 2 pi, which gives me the square root of 2 pi. All right, so this can be thought of as a square of something square rooted. Okay, so that is what we have. Just in case you're a little rusty on your algebra. Okay, so in these, these things, these techniques are very important. Uh, especially going forward. Now, I have e raised to this quantity in the numerator. I have e raised to this quantity in the denominator. If I have the same base, which is e, and I do, and I divide, then I subtract the exponents. And we need to look and see that the uh, exponent in the numerator is negative, so it remains negative, and then I subtract this negative exponent in the denominators, which is going to make it positive. And so that is what we have down here. We have uh, what's left of the fraction in the front, and then we have taken the exponent in the numerator minus the exponent in the denominator, which was negative, so that becomes positive. And now, watch this uh, 2 here. The 2, um, so I was working through this without already uh, 
I just wrote this down. I didn't work through it ahead of time and rearrange it, all right? So I didn't do this as efficiently as I could. So I, um, I needed to look at this and analyze it. So what I did was I wanted to keep out the 1 minus rho squared, and I wanted to distribute the 2 because if you look... Um, the form is that we have 2 times the variance in the denominator in that exponent for the normal distribution. So that was my thought process. It turns out that I wasted a step because I could have just dis taken both of those and distributed, and that's what I ended up doing in the next step. Okay, But I said to watch the 2 because I distributed it across Q. Okay, So um, we'll do it the way I did, even though it's a little less um, efficient than it should be. Okay, so I kept the 1 over 1 minus rho squared out front. Need to be careful. I distributed this negative sign. So the first term became negative. It was positive. The second term became positive because it was negative, and the third term was positive, but now it became negative because I distributed that negative sign across all three terms. Now, because I didn't work through this ahead of time, I canceled out the 2 here, as you probably would as well. So, and that's fine. Sometimes we cancel out things, and then when we get to the end of the proof, we realize, well, I really didn't need to cancel that out. I needed to keep it. But at this point, we were trying to simplify. So we simplified these terms, and, and I plugged in the value of Q from last time. So the value of Q uh, was the positive here, it was the negative of this quantity, and it was the positive of this quantity. All right? So, oops, let me get rid of those. Okay. And then I have this term here left over. And so this is when I realized that I needed to distribute this 1 minus rho squared across all of these. And that is because I can't combine these terms unless I do. Okay? Okay. So um, if I thought about that, I could have just uh, done it to begin with. But now in this next step, I have distributed everything out. And so I just multiplied the 1 minus rho squared across the three terms inside of Q. And now I can look and try to combine like terms. And I see that I have x minus mu of x squared here, x minus mu of x squared here. I'm going to um, try to combine those. And so I put, wrote those together then, <clears throat> and I got the common denominator. I have a 1 minus rho squared here. I did not here, so I had to multiply both the top and the bottom by that to get that common denominator. And then if I look at this and I um, factor out this x minus mu x squared out of both of these, you'll see in the next term that I have a, a negative 1, a positive 1, minus rho squared. So these cancel. And the rest of the terms, I believe I just, just carried down. Okay. Now, I get to this point. I've canceled this out. So I, I end up, this is a negative rho squared. So don't forget that. that. That could be brought to the outside here. And then what we want to do is we want to... Um, we want to um, look at the answer and then work backwards. So uh, in the previous order of the notes, I'd already gone over what the distribution of this distribution, uh, this conditional distribution of y given x was. So it has a normal distribution with this mean and this variance. So if I know the mean and the variance of a normal distribution, I can write its PDF because it has the same form. I take the square root of the variance, and I put it in front of the square root of 2 pi. And so that's what I did here. And then I have 2 times the variance here. And then I have y minus mu quantity squared here in the exponent. And so I wrote this, and I said, okay, now, um, I know that this is what it's supposed to be. And by the way, I already have this part worked out from number one, equation one, up here. So equation one was here, and here is the um, 
uh, portion in the front. So that is already matching. I don't have to do anything to that, which is good. It would be uh, very difficult to, to uh, do something with that and make it something different uh, in this case. All right. And so now I need to make what I'm calling the exponent here, Q star. I need to make that look like number two here. So I'm going to work backwards. Now, I've put here that all of this actually None of this would be included in the final proof. That's the way we do things. We work things out maybe in, back, in reverse order get, uh, and get things to looking the same, and then we just put it together in the forward order like we were geniuses and could see all this uh, just moving forward, which, of course, um, I, very few of us can do really do that. Okay, so I can't. Maybe you can. All right, so now... So we've got this Q star, so I'm going to work with Q star, and then I take a look at Q star, and I'm going to compare it to number two. And I see that when I look at number two, let me clean up number two a little bit here, I see that I have y minus mu y and y minus mu y squared. So I have grouped y minus mu y, which is a good thing because, um, well, I could leave it like this, or I have actually distributed the negative sign like this. This makes it one, two, three terms. When you square that, you get six terms, right? So uh, actually nine terms, right? So, and then you can combine some of them. But I would rather not do that. I'd rather have the fewest number of terms here as possible. So when I look at this and I see that y minus mu y need to be grouped, that makes this easier. Now I can call this a and this b, and I have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared when I square this, okay? And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to square this quantity in the numerator, uh, having grouped y minus mu y. And so I end up with these three terms. And again, you have to be careful here. When I went back and looked, I saw that I had forgotten the square there for the row. But of course, it's obviously a square. Okay, so right here, and you square it. Okay. And then the bottom, I ended up with this common denominator, and uh, that is what I need to end up with. And now, I need to make this into three fractions. I have three fractions in number two here. So I have three fractions up here, okay? And this fraction has x minus mu squared in it. This has the product, and this has y minus mu y squared. And so I'm going to uh, combine those um, and make this look that way. So what I've done is I've got mu minus, um, mu minus y squared here, and then I have x minus uh, mu x squared here, and I have the product in the middle. So this is backwards from what I had up here. I had x squared, uh, x minus mu x squared, um, oops, wrong thing, first, and that's fine. So I'm going to rearrange number two now. I'm going to rearrange it so that now I have, um, so I've rewritten it first. I've just rewritten it so that I have it and I can see it because it was on a page, you know, above me. And so this, of course, would not go into the proof. And then I just switch the order here to make it the same as what I have up here in number three. And let me clean up number three now so we can read it when we need to. Okay. And so I say, well, okay, so this one, the first one with Y, this term with y alone is done. It, it looks exactly like I need it to look up here. So this, this is the same. Now I look at the middle term, and I see that I have 2 row y and 2 x y sigma. I have 2 row sigma y, 2 uh, sigma x sigma y squared. And I say, okay, so I need... Um, in the top, I have rho, so I need 2 sigma y. And the, if I do it in the top, I have to uh, do the same multiplication in the bottom, so 2 sigma y. And this is going to give me 2 sigma y squared, sigma x, and then 1 minus rho squared. 
And that is what I have down here. And up here, I now have what I need. So I have both the top and the bottom correct. And so at this point, the middle is done as well. So this one's done and this one's done. And I did that by multiplying uh, by this nice version of one that I needed. Now I take a look at this third, um, or actually it's not that one, that's one with X in it. So I took it, take a look at this third fraction here, rho squared, X minus mu of X squared over two sigma X squared. And I need that to look like this. So I need rho squared sigma Y squared in the top. So I need, know I need to multiply by sigma y squared over sigma y squared. And when I do that, I do end up with exactly what I had here, which is good. So now I can um, do the rest of the proof just by, so now I have this agrees. So now this is number three. It looks just like number three, and I can work backwards. I'm going to have this as my next step, and then I'll have this as my next step, and then that will lead me back to here, the normal distribution. And so that is exactly what I have done here. I've just re redone these two, actually. Uh, so I went to here, and then I went to here, and then I came down here. So what did I do in each of these? So I, let's see, so here, oh, so what I did was I needed to have this as my denominator in each of the fractions. I only need this. So I needed to make this my denominator. In order to do that, I needed to keep this, the 2, and the 1 minus rho squared, the sigma y squared, the rho, and so that means that the sigma x needed to go up into the denominator. When it goes up into the denominator, it has to be in the num in the when it goes up in I'm sorry in the numerator. When it goes up into the numerator, it's going to go from uh, into the denominator of the numerator. So that's why we have the division here. Okay. So um, so I had to get rid of this and put it up in the numerator, and so now I have this term here. And the same thing occurred here. I, I needed to get rid of the sigma x squared. I needed to keep the rest that was in the denominator, and I needed to send this into the numerator. And so I ended up with this uh, coefficient here, rho squared sigma y squared over sigma x squared in the numerator. So now I have the, the correct denominator for all three fractions, and I can combine them. And once I combine them, in the numerator here, I have a perfect square. And so I can then rewrite this uh, as y minus mu of y grouped together minus this quantity and then the whole thing squared. And then to make it look correct, I need y minus the mean. So I regroup this and when I, when I put the parenthesis here after the y, so after the y here, and this other one will look. So when I put the parenthesis here, I have another negative. So I had to make this negative a positive to put that parenthesis. So make sure that you're very careful with this. And so now I have mu of y plus rho sigma y sigma x over sigma x, x minus mu of x, y minus that, quantity squared. This is my mean. And then this is my variance. Okay. And so I was able to rewrite this in this form as a normal distribution. And I can then see that this is the normal distribution with this mean that I knew it had to be and this variance. And so thus I have uh, derived and proved that the conditional distribution of y given x is a normal distribution with mean mu plus sigma, uh, I'm sorry, rho times sigma y over sigma x times x minus mu x, and then variance, I have to square this, sorry, left off my square there, sigma y squared times 1 minus rho squared, okay? So that's it for this video. Sorry these two videos were a little longer, but we won't have a third video in this uh, lecture, so that will take care of the extra time, I hope. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed this video.
Please don't forget to scan and upload your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, come to virtual office hours. If you just can't do that before you need the help, then by all means email me. But when you email me, I need two things. I need a picture of your work so far and I need a picture of the problem in case I'm away from uh, the book or my desk or what have you. This way I can help you as quickly as possible. So please take care of yourself and stay safe and we hope to see you next time.